Let's recall how averages work when we're just taking the average of several values. For instance, test scores or something like that. So on an exam, you can imagine people got 73, 82, 100, a 95, and an 85, right? A reasonable spread. Then to get the average of this, we would note that there are five terms, so we'd add them all up and divide by five which comes out to 87% average. Okay, so that's the idea with averages, is you add everything up and then divide by the number of things there are. So then how would we compute the average value of a function? Let's take some arbitrary function f of x and think about how we might compute the average value on some interval from a to b, right? I mean, and maybe you can see the average might be something like I don't know, this in here maybe? I don't know, it's kind of hard to estimate, but it's gonna have some average value in there. Well, it's a similar approach. We could take a bunch of values on this function and add them up and then divide by the number of values that we have to get an average value of the function. So let's call the first one x1 star. You remember that notation from the limit definition of the integral. The second one is x2 star, the third one is x3 star, etc. Well then the average value of the function would be the sum of the function evaluated at all these points, x1 star, x2 star, x3 star, etc. divided by 5, since we have 5 different x values. So now if we generalize this to let it go up to x sub n star, we'd get a similar sum now over n, since there's n x sub i values. But recall that delta x equals b minus a over n. So we can solve this for n to get n equals b minus a over delta x and plug it in here. So this gives us an average value of the same sum up top. Now all multiplied by delta x and divided by b minus a. Well, this notation is getting slightly cumbersome, but luckily we have slightly more compact notation, so we can write this as 1 over b minus a times the sum, uh, let's see, from k equals uh, 1 to n, f of x k star. And this is starting to look somewhat familiar, all times delta x. Well, this would give us a reasonable approximation for n values of x k star, but we want to know the exact value of the average of f of x. So to find the exact value for the average, we'll let n go to infinity and take an infinite number of points from the function. We do that using a limit, and this will give us the exact value of the function. So we'll write it as f bar for the average value of the function, is then, okay, the limit, well, actually, 1 over b minus a can come out to the front of the limit because the limit has nothing to do with that. The limit is only concerned with n going to infinity. All right, the sum uh, from k equals 1 to n of f of x k star delta x. But note that this is exactly the definition of the definite integral of f of x. So we have 1 over b minus a integral from a to b f of x dx. And this expression gives us the exact value for the average of the function f of x over the interval a to b. And now you can kind of see why it's necessary to take calculus for higher levels of probability and statistics because when you're talking about averages and probabilities of things happening, where you have an infinitely large data set that you're putting in, you need calculus to be able to talk about that. So here's a nice looking version of the formula that we use to compute the average. Same formula, just looks a little nicer. Again, graphically, we might have a function like this that rises as we go from A to B. Well, the average value of this function will be a constant function because both this integral, the definite integral, spits out some number, we'll call it n, and then this 1 over b minus a spits out some number m, 
So f bar can only give us a number. So f bar will be a constant function that looks something like this, going from a to b, just a single value all the way across.